Good morning, this is Pastor John, and the title of my sermon is The Cares of This World. I have been uh, dealing with a lot of Christians, or so-called Christians on Facebook lately, who I could really see the seeds of this world in their life, and uh, the cares of this world, and um, what the world perceives them to be, and thinks them to be, as being over what Jesus wants them to be. And uh, this has been disturbing to me. I've been dealing with this for quite a while. And uh, Satan will use these things to entrap you. Um, he'll ha use these things to have people come against you. And um, we must uh, be wise as the serpents, but harmless as doves in the uh, manner that we uh, put on our full armor to fight these things. And... Um, when attacks come against me, I always uh, fall back on the word of God and uh, realize what he means to me and um, concentrate and put my centeredness on the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And um, though I might not be rich, though I may not have all the things in this world, that's all right, for my kingdom is not of this world. And uh, I just want to read you um, some scripture now and uh, explain it a little to you for uh, it's uh, probably pretty familiar to you all who have, have ever read the Bible. Um, it's in Luke 5, excuse me, Luke 8, 5 to 15. My eyes are very bad lately. Uh, I've been dealing with diabetes and uh, new medications and my blood sugars are going up and down and I'm sure anybody out there who's uh, sick knows what it is to deal with sickness and how it affects our body but you know what greater is he who is in me than he was in this world and uh, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ and um, believing expecting the miracles so it's Luke 8 5 to 15 the sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the ear ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky soil, and as soon as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. Other seed fell in the good soil and grew up and produced a crop a hundred times as great. As he said these things, he would call out, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples began questioning him as to what this parable meant. And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus was breaking it down to them and explaining to them what it meant to accept his word, put it in your heart, and how to live the lifestyle. He wanted to make it very plain to them. And uh, this stuff was hidden from the wise and the prudent and was um, revealed to the harmless and uh, the babes in Christ. And uh, seeing that they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. This is something that every Christian must take in every day, the word of God. The seed is what grows when it is planted inside of us. We plant the word of God inside of us and it grows. And um, as it grows, like an apple tree, it bears much fruit. Um, a tomato bush grows many tomatoes. Um, seed is the word of God. Those beside the road are those who have heard. That is us. That is all uh, the people who have heard the word of God. And uh, it's being preached everywhere today. False and true words of God. Let's um, make sure that we check everything out. Excuse me. That we check everything out before we believe it. Those beside the road are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they will not believe and be saved. The devil's always after us, folks. Um, it's very... Um, easy to see today how the devil attacks us in every way. He attacks us in the media. Um, he offers us all the pleasures of this world, so-called pleasures. And uh, if we're not rooted in the word, if we're not have that seed planted deep within our hearts, 
It's so easy to fall away. It's um, so easy for him to tempt us. Those on the rocky soil are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no firm root. They believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. This is happening a lot today. Um, people are looking for the answers to things in life. They're looking for um, the answers, why they're going through things, um, why they're sick, why they're losing jobs, why... Um, there's so much starvation, homelessness, um, abuse in this world, and um, the gospel is presented to them, and they say, "Hey, yeah, you know, some good answers here. You know, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna think on this." But they're not planting that seed. They're not getting into the Word and praying every day and accepting it in their heart. So that seed is not planted. It's on rocky soil. Um, and when the temptations of this world come back, when Satan says, you know, what are you believing on this for? What is this getting you? You know, where are you prospering in this life? Um, where is your rewards um, from God? You know, and uh, all this other stuff. That is why and when the seed becomes unfertile and it's not planted deeply into the heart of mankind. He is not planting himself. He is not believing on the word of God. He's letting Satan rule his life. And it goes on to say, the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones that have heard, and as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit forth, and there is no maturity. Um, so forth. People who really truly want God but want this world. They want to be in the world and of the world. Jesus Christ said you are to be in the world but not of the world. We cannot keep pursuing the things of this world, the riches of this world, the prosperity of this world, and truly believe that Jesus Christ is going to be planted in our hearts because we're putting another God in our heart, the, the God of uh, wealth, the God of um, prosperity, the God of want, need. So the big difference between want and need, I would want a mansion, but I don't need a mansion. This is according to the world standards. Um, just give me a roof over my head. Um, we would want a filet mignon, but we should be happy with a hamburger. <laughs> Excuse me, I eat a lot of hamburgers. We eat a lot of hamburgers at the Presbyterian House. Maybe too much. Maybe that's why I'm sick. I don't know, Lord. You provide. Your will be done. Um, but because of we're seeking all these pleasures of the world and uh, the things of the world, we're being choked in the Word because uh, we're putting the world above God's standards. Uh, and uh, the last thing I want to share with you is but the seed and the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Amen. You know, uh, when we plant that seed of the Lord Jesus Christ and his salvation and what he done for us on the cross in our hearts, and every day we water it, for it's a fertile seed. Um, Jesus is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's what the Bible tells us. The uh, Word of God is a fertile Word. Um, it's always growing. It's always um, maturing within those who truly seek it out. You can seek it out in many ways, um, through prayer, through um, fasting, uh, through studying the Word, um, through praise. Uh, God says to praise Him in a storm. How many of us actually do that? How many of us, when we're dealing with sickness or loss or sorrow, actually sit there praising God instead of saying, you know, Oh God, God, where's my vengeance? You know, uh, where's my deliverance? Um, we should praise him in a storm. We should seek him out. Um, we should always water that seed so that it grows. Um, funny thing is, you know, Jesus talks about a mustard seed in another parable where it's the smallest and the least of the seeds, but it grows to the biggest tree. Um, that just tells you, you know, you might think, you know, you're a little squirt or something in this world. 
and um, you know you're not as good as everybody else um, but you could take that little seed and you know by faith make it stronger and greater than anything else I'm not much of a speaker um, I'm not too eloquent um, haven't had a lot of education um, don't have a PhD I'm not a doctorate I, I don't know where all this stuff's coming from today folks but uh, I'm just me you know and a long time ago, <clears throat> God told me he could use me to reach people because uh, I'm, I'm part of the pure in heart, um, simple. And uh, the only thing I'm worrying about is preaching the gospel and, you know, encouraging you and uh, giving you the truth. A lot of people have been coming against me lately uh, saying, I'm not preaching this, I'm not preaching that, I'm holding their... Um, Posts out of my group, you know, because uh, they want to harp on this or harp on that. Uh, you know what? I pray to the Lord on every post that comes to us, and whether it would edify anybody or not. And um, I'm sorry if I don't put everybody's post up, but um, we're trying to stay true to the group, uh, the soon return of Jesus Christ, and um, getting our houses clean getting our houses proper in the name of the Lord. It's the most important thing to me. Um, and planting the seed, planting the seed of salvation to people. Uh, anybody who comes to the group and wants to edify themselves and uh, lift themselves up to be higher than others and think they could post here and uh, not participate, you know, I'll drop a post here, but I'll never come to the group and participate. And, you know, I can get, 50 hallelujahs and uh, 25 amens and I don't have to, yeah, I deserve it on somebody. No, but at least will be abased and the ones who abase themselves will be humbled. Just remember that. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of cares of the world out there upon us today. Uh, in closing, I just want to say that uh, I twine, <laughs> twine. I try not to dwell too much on uh, everything, but I'm a worrier. I've been that way all my life, and it's a sin. It's a sin to worry, and it's something that I've battled my whole life. Um, I don't want to worry, but um, I see so many things coming against us, and I want to keep feeding that seed. I want to keep seeing it grow. And um, <clears throat> thank God he's been with me through my life so far, and uh, I've gotten as far as I have. And um, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep preaching the gospel and sharing with you all. And uh, I don't want the cares of the world to choke me or to choke you. Uh, so let's put our feet on that solid rock today and uh, believe and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and let nothing stand against us. And uh, when the world comes against us um, with... Uh, the thoughts of why we don't have this, why we don't have that, why we're letting the riches and everything choke our salvation, choke our faith. Let's just say it happened to Jesus Christ. They attacked him. Um, he didn't have everything in this world. He was a humble man. He was a spiritual man. He was a quiet man. Um, but he was fueled by the Holy Ghost and uh, God Almighty, the Father. And uh, anybody who went against him and the gospel that he preached, he defended himself. And so shall we. So shall we. We shall stand for what is true and what is honest and what is fair in this world. And it all comes from God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, the Son, who thought it not offensive to offer his life for us, a living sacrifice for those who did not deserve it. There's no way in uh, God's green earth I deserved his uh, sacrifice and his love, but he gave it to me freely. And um, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to fight for that freedom. And uh, I'm believing and trusting in Jesus Christ today. How about you? Um, are you putting the cares of this world away? Are you um, putting away your idols? Are you putting away um, your treasures? Are you putting away... Um, your plans for the future, you know, got to put my 401k and all of my um, investments and everything because I got to worry about 30 years down the line. No, 
Jesus said, sufficient for the, oh, the day is the evil thereof. We have just to worry about today. So let's uh, spread that word. Let's uh, let everybody know that Jesus loves them. Let's. I love you all, and um, I pray to God that I am a good servant, and I'm a good man, and um, somehow in all of this uh, rambling on and pouring my heart out to you this morning, you can see Jesus Christ. So uh, until then, let's put our cares and our thoughts on heaven and no more on this earth, and don't let people persuade you. Or tell you otherwise. In Jesus' name I say this. And uh, till next time, this is Pastor John checking out. Peace, love, and joy to you all. Keep looking up to heaven for your redemption draweth nigh.